In programming, a variable is used to store a value while your program runs. So what it really is, um, is a location in the memory of the computer that you've assigned a name. And so long as your program is running, that location in the memory will hold a certain value in it for you. Or you can change what the value is in there. But it basically provides a container where you can keep track of things as your program runs. Okay. Um, when you want to make a variable, you have to do a couple things for the computer so that the compiler knows what um, is going to happen. So you have to tell it in advance that a variable is going to be used and it will set aside the appropriate amount of space for it based on what type of information you want to store. So a declaration has two parts. The first is the type of the information and there are specific names for the types in C++. And the second thing is the identifier or the name of the variable. Okay. So um, data types really determine how many bits in memory are being reserved for you, like how much space is set aside. And depending on what kind of information you want to store, a computer will set aside more or less space for you. Um, so types that you can have are int, which is short for integer or whole numbers. They can be negative, positive, or zero. Um, long, if you need a slightly bigger integer values, um, will get you more space, but will still hold whole numbers. Um, if you are coding for some reason you need to save space, like you're working on the panel for the front of a microwave and there's not a lot of memory there and you need to code its operations, but you only need shorter numbers, um, there's actually another variant called short, which will set aside less space. So if you are having to worry about how much memory something has um, and you can be sure that your numbers are not going to be very long, then short might be the good choice for you. Okay. Um, then there's type double. And that's for decimal values. They can, again, be positive, negative, or zero. Um, you can also hold whole numbers in there. Uh, it just means that it could potentially be changed to a decimal through math or through you, like, typing in a new value. Okay? Um, float is an alternative you'll sometimes see. It's kind of the same thing as double, but doesn't quite hold as big a numbers. Um, there's type char, which is for a single character um, that you can type or that can be displayed. So what I mean by that is it can hold like the letter G or it can hold a, a single numeric digit like the number six. It can hold a single piece of punctuation like a period. Um, it can also hold things that you can't type. So for example, in the console, you can sometimes you can show smiley faces and music so, uh, notes and that kind of thing. Um, and you can't type that from the keyboard, like there's not a key for it, but you can still store it inside of a char in a program. Um, the type matters because, again, it's leaving enough space for you. So if I have a, a double value and I try to store it in an integer, there's not room in there. So the value that's hanging out, um, it's just going to get lost. The computer's not going to know what to do with it. So it won't actually let you do that. But if it did, you'd be trying to cram something too big into too small a container. Um, so we're telling the computer, hold this much space for me because I'm going to need it because of the type of value that I'm storing. Okay? Um, so... Type is the first part, like we just said, and then the identifier that you choose is the second part of your variable names. And there's rules for what you can name your variables. So let's look at the rules. Um, first are syntax rules, which means if you break these, your code won't run at all. It'll be an error. Okay. So your, your identifiers can contain underscores, uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, um, but it can only start with an underscore or a letter, but starting with an underscore is super weird, so you're not going to do that. You're going to start with a letter, okay? And you can't use reserved or keywords, so you can't use words that already mean something like main or int or return, okay? And you're also not allowed to have spaces, all right? So those, you break those syntax rules, your stuff won't run. Convention rules are kind of just stylistic rules that we agree on so your code doesn't look like complete nonsense to someone who's been programming already, um, and we kind of expect it to look this way. Um, if you break these, uh, your grade will go down, so you don't want to do that. Um, so by convention, we'll start them with lowercase letter. Most of the words should be lowercase. Um, it should definitely tell you what it's storing. So if you're saving somebody's age, guess what? Call the variable age. It doesn't have to be a mystery. Um, you don't want to name it something totally weird. Okay. Um, you want to keep your names kind of short or concise. And if there's multiple words, you have two options. You can either 
type in camel case, which means the first letter of each additional word gets uppercase, so it sort of has humps, that's why it's called camel case. Or you can separate the words with underscores, which are allowable characters um, in C++. Okay, so if we look at these um, student grades, that would be acceptable. Um, it's not breaking any syntax rules. It's using camel case here instead of a space. That's awesome. Okay, 10th grade average is breaking a syntax rule because you cannot begin the name of a variable with a number. It would have to be beginning with a letter to be legal. Um, this, although it's totally weird to start with an underscore, is syntactically le legal. Technically, it's not really following our convention rules of starting with a letter. Um, this doesn't break any syntax rules, but it's all caps, which we actually use to mean something else, so we wouldn't want to do that. It's breaking convention rules. Um, my favorite number um, is breaking syntax rules because it has spaces. Pikachu, Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z is the best, is syntactically legal, but conventionally terrible. Uh, I put this in here because I used to have a student who just refused to not name his variables this kind of stuff, and he literally just did it year after year after year. He did it on the AP exam, was an embarrassment to the entire school, you know, like failed it, failed my class over and over again, so don't be that guy. Name your variables what they actually represent. Okay, and then uh, num wins legal. That's good. Okay, so here's what it looks like when you declare a variable. Um, the thing, first thing is that um, you you typically, if you're running a short program, it's probably going to be the first thing inside main. Otherwise, you can declare it right before you need it when as you're going in through your code. Okay, again, you need the type and the identifier, and it's actually a statement when you declare, so you need to end it with a semicolon. Okay. And if the name of the variable is not obvious, which, remember, it should be, then you can also provide a comment to explain the purpose of it. Okay. So here is what it looks like. I've got main. I've got a variable called age and age, double GPA. If I were really writing this program, I would not need to comment these because it's obvious what these two things hold. I've just put these comments here to kind of show you what it would look like if you were commenting what your variable is. But again, these words, very obvious, don't technically need these comments over here. Okay. 